to all my comic book collector friends, people that are investing in comic books. I know I've got a lot of sports card people on the channel, but there is a lot of crossover I found too. And we also want to make sure that we're open to other audiences. I've been buying, you know, quite a bit of, of graded comic books over the last couple of years, and I'm kind of dinking and dunking back into it too uh, here recently. I've got a, a couple of cool books that I've, I've made offers to that I want to, hopefully I get them and hopefully I can show them here on the channel because I'm really excited about them. Some rare stuff. Um, so anyway, guys, if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. This is a collectibles channel. We wrap some personal finance elements into it, but we're just here to have fun. Maybe there's a lot of your friends, family that are like, I don't want to talk about the comic books or the sports cards with you. Well, that's what this community is for. So thank you very much for joining. And I'm going to go ahead. I just bought a subscription, a premium subscription on gocollect.com, which I'm using to kind of track pricing um, and look at kind of census reports and different things, which comics are selling, well, what's hot, what's, you know, what's not sort of stuff. Really great information. So I'm going to flip the camera around and show you my screen and we will go from there. All right, guys, let's do this. Okay, guys, I am on the Go Collect, um, and I, I picked the premium subscription. I believe it's $89 for the year. I just bought it. But the thing that I like about this is it's given me, I picked the most popular Bronze Age comic books. You, you can break it down from bronze to silver to golden age, recent re recently released, etc. cetera. Um, and so it breaks it all down. This is a book. This is so funny. I sold this exact book at a 9.8 maybe two months ago for about $500, like $525 or something, and now it's at $775. I still do have a copy of 9.6 uh, for this book. It's an awesome cover. It is, you know, arguably kind of the first appearance of that. Well, it's not really arguably. It is the it's the origin story of the alien symbiote, as it says here, that eventually becomes Venom. So, not necessarily first appearance, uh, but it is a, a really kind of important book in that whole Venom Spider-Man uh, storyline. And overall, just a really cool book, too. So if you click here, it'll open up sales. And this is the grade. So grading is a little bit different for the sports card people watching. It's going 9.8, 9.6, 9.4, 9.2, 9.0, oh, et cetera. And it's showing you kind of fair market value based on recent sales. If I look at 9.8, so it's got kind of fair market value at 7.75, but this will show me recent eBay sales that it's pulling. Um, and so you can see there's quite a few sales that were above that 775 number. I, mean, I guess they're taking an average of it. Um, but still, there's sales that are above that. But that's that's kind of cool. And then it also shows you the census report. Universal is the most common. That's the blue label. The qualifiers are in green. And then the signature copies over here are in yellow. If you have, you know, a lot of times it's Stan Lee, um, you know, that signed uh, these Marvel books. Um, but it, it shows you kind of the total number of books down here in the universal grade, 14,000. And then just like the PSA population report or, you know, BGS population report, it breaks it down for you. How many are in a 10, which is literally like you just never see these 10.0 or 9.9. .9. And then, you know, 9.8 is more common, um, but really, really kind of a cool book. So that is the first one that we're going to look at here. And then you can kind of go down the list. I'm going to use that as I'm looking at comic books. I've made a couple of offers on books that I think are awesome. I will share them. You know, as I've said on the channel, I started out getting back into the hobby a little over three years ago in sports cards, but also big into graded comic books. I had a copy of this Eternals number one. I had it in a 9.6, which I actually sold this about a year ago, maybe for about $300. And it has since uh, gone north. It's It's gone up. There is an Eternals movie that is supposed to come out at some point. So I'm sure there's a lot of kind of excitement around that. I don't know why Omega Men number three. I mean, I know it's first appearance of Lobo, um, which is a big DC villain. So maybe that's what's kind of kicked this one up. But surprised to see that one at number three when you've got other books. Now, maybe it's just done by sales volume. Probably sales volume, I would guess, because you've got Spider Woman number one here, and I doubt that Spider Woman number one is, you know, it's, from a value standpoint. Obviously, you've got like Hulk 181. This is first appearance of Wolverine down here. Um, some great books, 
Wolverine number one was a very common book. When was this one? I think it was in late 80s. When is when did this one come out? Does it say? Oh, maybe it doesn't say here. Let's see. I thought that maybe it did. But it shows you some different different kind of additions. You can watch, you know, so they'll notify you, you know, if there's, uh, you know, ones that are popping up. But this is kind of cool. And then it shows you, you know, it's got eBay links and stuff. This, I remember this one as a kid. This was a popular book. Um, and it's not a not a scarce book at all, that Wolverine number one. But it's one that if you're a comic book collector, especially I'm about to turn 40, you remember that one. You definitely remember that one. Moon Knight number one. I believe he's getting his own TV series. So the, you get the origin of Moon Knight. Um, what was that first appearance of Moon Knight, though? That is, that's a huge book. The first appearance of Moon Knight, and I can't think of which one it is. Star Wars number one. Amazing Spider-Man number 129. That's the first appearance of The Punisher. Always been a popular book to own. And you can see in a 9.8. It's at tw- it's at over twenty thousand dollars for a nine point eight in that book. Yeah, some really cool ones on the list. This is one that I let go as well. Uh, a three point five that I had sold last year. I bought it for three hundred dollars and I sold it for six fifty, thinking I did really well on it. Well, should have probably held on to that one. Should have held on to it, but you know. It happens. It happens. It was still a good, you know, a good profit at the time. But some interesting things to kind of watch. This is Bronze Age. You can kick it over into the Silver Age. I do have a copy of this in a 6.0, so that's worth about 11.50. I bought it for 7.50, so it's appreciated a little bit. You don't see as many comic books, you know, moving quite the same, you know, as as what you would see for sports cards, which actually kind of makes it a little bit nicer in a way because these are definitely more of a longer term hold. All right, and then Golden Age takes us all the way back to some of the early year stuff. Batman number one, $3.3 million fair market value. Wow, first appearance of the Joker. Wowzers, wowzers. There are some really cool old DC books. I'm not really as much a fan of the newer stuff, the modern age of DC, but... The older ones are are really, really cool. All right, guys, I just wanted to share this. This is on gocollect.com, and this is what I'm using, um, you know, to kind of get get price points, try to get a feel for what stuff is worth, and just to get, you know, pop reports, census reports, be able to see how many of these things are out there. And what you'll find is in comparison to sports cards, just a lot more scarce, a lot of these books in comparison to to sports cards. So that that kind of creates an interesting arbitrage, you know, if there is kind of a bigger push into graded comic books. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this and take care, guys.